Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I'm going to begin with uh, dealing with the the fail of the previous episode and this is probably going to become some sort of a pattern for me but anyway uh, let's EVA podzer and let's try and get that uh, solar panel. I'm just testing it. It has no particular meaning at this point uh, because we are not in range of any of the probes but I want to try it out and see if I was simply too far away from from the from the solar panel and I have plenty of gripes about this I I really think that the mods should sort of match the game in terms of uh, how far away you need to be before accessing the context menu it's not really the game's thing to match the mods on that but then again, the mods are supposed to modify the game, and so if this is one thing that they got to modify, in other words, how far you have to reach before as accessing the context menu or something, that's uh, just something I'm going to have to deal with. So, yeah, still my fail. Unfortunately, uh, I was hoping uh, the Kerbal would come out on the other side. He's come out on the dark side of the ship. Okay. Okay, so we can grab now. I'm not going to grab it, but yeah, so just confirming, yes, we can grab these. And it was simply because I was too far away. Alright, so. We now know something. I know something. So I will proceed with what I'm supposed to be doing, which is completing these contracts. And it's all about timing now. And you know what, uh, since I've sort of introduced it in my beta tutorial series, I think maybe this is a good time for putting in Kerbal Alarm Clock. I don't seem to have it here, or at least I don't have an update. Oh, maybe uh, the... Uh, see, I'm, I'm missing the icon, but uh, is it in here somewhere? No, I, so I, I think I need Kerbal Alarm Clock. Because we've got way too much stuff going on right now. And I would like to see what we can do with that. So let me get him back in here, and then I'm going to quit out and get Kerbal Alarm Clock in. Because now we've got asteroids to time and all sorts of stuff. Okay, and board. Alright, so Ponser's back. We've got plenty of Delta V to uh, do whatever we want with. In fact, uh, everything short of transferring to either Jewel or Elu, or I guess Moho. I don't know if we could do Moho from here. Maybe, maybe not. But uh, we could go to Kerbin, we could go to Duna, or we could go to Trez. And the issue here is A, we're not in any of the phase angles for that. But also B, uh, we don't have any probes. So we need to get some probes back. So the logical thing would be to swing by Kerbin, grab some probes, and then move on. But uh, we could just transfer to for instance Duna and then have the probes meet us there but we've already got missions underway en route well that need to be en route to EVE so we've got that to do as well so anyway like I said Kerbal on clock time okay so here we are again and what do we need we need a bunch of different transfer windows so first thing uh, let's say EVE to Kerbin Let's have Eve to Duna. Okay, looks like Eve to Duna is going to be before Eve to Kerbin. I definitely need Kerbin to Eve. Okay. And so Kerbin to Eve will be for these two. And so we'll be putting one satellite into that predetermined orbit around EVE and then landing on EVE with this probe. And then there's this asteroid. What do I do with you, little asteroid? Well, I'm going to have to figure out your encounter. So can we uh, add SOI change alarm? Yes. But okay, that's first. Okay, so we've got some things. It looks like the asteroid thing is first, even before we do any sort of transfers to anywhere else. So, yeah, I need to put together a mission to push this asteroid around. 
All right, to the VAB. All right, I'm coming back to you a whole day after I began this episode, and that's because the launcher design took so long. Um, I just, I, well, I'll show you why it took so long in a moment. I rather overdid things. But in the meantime, I actually uh, received a new mouse, a cheapy $25 one, but the important thing is it doesn't make quite as annoying a high-pitched sound when it clicks. So uh, hopefully that will be... That will be an improvement in helping you enjoy these videos. Uh, I still got my old keyboard, but I don't think it's uh, clicking was quite as annoying. So anyway, uh, that was from uh, viewer feedback in the comments. They mentioned the clicking, and so I've attempted to get rid of it. And so, yep, that's one thing that has changed. A lot of things has changed. I've added the, the curb alarm clock. My RAM usage in this series, unfortunately, is very high right now, so that's a little bit worrying. It's uh, getting a little bit into crashy territory uh, after I added that. Uh, something is causing a memory leak, either curb alarm clock or the stock bug fix modules. But anyway, we'll, we will proceed as best we can. So here is the Space Tug Beta. And it's Space Tug Beta because I actually had designed a Space Tug Alpha that I've never launched. And I'll show that to you at some point. Hopefully we'll get to launch it. But uh, it might not be necessary with this space tug beta. As you can see it's a two stager and the stage here is one of the one of my favorite little Rocket Max 487S's and then of course the nuclear stage here. And so the goal was to not have too low a thrust to weight ratio because uh, you can see the burn times. This whole thing takes 26 minutes to burn and has about 8800 delta V. So quite a thing. It could have a lot more Delta V if I just dumped the the mob propellant. As you can see now it's more like 9,400. But uh, I'll keep the mob propellant in for now. I don't know what we'll need to push around the Class A asteroid. I haven't done a lot of asteroid pushing recently. It's been a long time. So yep. Otherwise uh, we've got solar panels, the RCS pods here, and just one reaction wheel and hopefully that'll do the trick. Of course the probe core is inside here, it's one of the octos. Um, yeah, now the part where th the launcher is supposed to be able to carry 70 tons to the moon and so this is not uh, much of a mass for it, It's uh, this is underweight for what we intend to do with this launcher eventually. But uh, it's got a reusable second stage as well as a reusable first stage. So this is complicated. Um, here you see the second stage. The second stage is actually powered by toroidal aerospikes, which we don't get to use these very much, but I, I've wanted to figure out a use for it. And uh, here it is. Uh, we're using one of these uh, Quinta adapters so that I can attach the first stage to the center attachment point and four toroidal air spikes on the side here. They are heavy, they don't have too much thrust, but then again uh, they are powering the second stage so it's not too bad. This is actually the reserve tank, I need to turn that off. It's giving an incorrect delta V impression. And in fact uh, while we're at I'm gonna do a sneak peek here and I'm gonna turn off the reserve tank for the first stage which is also reusable of course. Uh, so you got a peek there, but let's continue talking about this. Of course, we've got lander legs here. Uh, come on. Uh, reaching them seems to be a little bit tough. That's a little bit worrying. I've sort of put them on in a weird way because uh, I resized this tank. Hmm. Yeah, I, after I put them on, I resized this tank. Let me see if I can size it back up again. Oh, I still can't reach him. All right. Well, uh, hopefully, just pressing G will uh, solve. Will uh, drop the gear at the appropriate time. Anyway, uh, so yes, uh, the it, the controller for this is actually up here. This is the controller for the second stage. So all this comes down. This is not decoupled or anything. And uh, this is the SAS module for the second stage. It's got some parachutes, but it's mainly meant to make a uh, controlled landing with the engines. Uh, using this fuel, which is quite a lot of fuel actually when you think about it. Uh, it's got a lot of reserve fuel and it's meant to make a power landing with it. Of course, it's it's pretty stout, so it, I don't expect it to tip over or anything. So that's a good point. 
Now, the first stage is huge, and that's why this ended up being called Maximus V. The, the original configuration had a single oversized um, mainsail engine, so a mainsail engine sized to 5 meters. But I quickly realized that since that gave about 4 times as much thrust, but had 8 times the mass and cost, it would be better to just put 5 of these, as you see here. So these are five regular mainsails instead of oversized mainsails. And uh, you can see how it's attached. And there's a fuel tank. This is the reserve fuel tank, so I'm reserving much more fuel than I ever have before. And we've got the margins for that. Again, this is supposed to be carrying 70 tons to the moon, and the payload right now is only 18 tons. So we're actually going to have quite a lot of fuel left over. That might be a good or bad thing. Now, so the center stack is completely reusable. You can see the sort of feather-like system, uh, so, since the feather was a very successful sort of uh, returning, I mean, the reusable launch vehicle. Um, but I've got extendable pistons here for the lander legs. And so the landing situation looks more like this. Yeah, I think that'll be a little bit better. I haven't uh, put uh, keys for the pistons though, and that's because I'm worried about having too many action groups. I've already got uh, both, uh, there's a set of solar panels, wait a minute, uh, did I add the solar panels? I, I thought about adding the solar panels, I want to make sure I did. Doesn't look like I have. Okay, um, there's supposed to be a set of solar panels on the second stage, because the first stage, if you look at the Delta V, the first stage will get us to orbit with plenty to spare, of course, it's supposed to be carrying much heavier uh, payload. But yeah, the first stage will get us to orbit. The second stage will transfer us to the moon and then return itself. It can also transfer to Duna and return itself. Uh, at least that's my intention. So, but in order for those long transfers to take place, it's got to have solar panels and those have to be action grouped. I want these. I could have sworn I did this. I must not have saved that copy. That's worrying. What other changes have I not saved? Okay, so that's taken care of. And so now the boosters. The boosters are not currently recoverable. And uh, that is something I intend to fix eventually. But the boosters are only really necessary for the 70 ton configuration. You can see right now our thrust to weight ratio is 1.54 with them on. And we've got We've got a lot of Delta V. We've got more than 4,500 there, so we really don't need them. And they're 119.6 tons each, but uh, they deliver a thrust of uh, 3,120 kilonewtons, so uh, quite a thing, and uh, for 74 seconds. Uh, actually, 80 seconds vacuum. But anyway, uh, yeah, I don't think we need those. You can see that uh, with the full configuration, the, the mainsails alone would only provide 0.84 uh, TWR and you can see that because they light first but yeah I think we can leave these off and we see that we get uh, 1.14 with just this and the 4000 Delta V which is enough to get to orbit okay so let me just uh, add uh, another set of launch clamps here that should be better and so we'll just go with this configuration since we have the lighter payload and um, yeah, I might. I don't know. I, I think this should be well enough to get to orbit, but I might need to unlock these to give a little bit of a boost. So we do have the reserve fuel for that. Uh, and the reason I'm saying that is because we are we do need to put on the fairings again. So, but it needs uh, quite a bit of fuel reserve because the parachutes aren't enough to bring this down safely. The parachutes are barely able to just slow us down temporarily and also uh, to save us from re-entry heating uh, we need to run the engines to slow us down as well I'm still not entirely sure about orientation and whether we're gonna end up spinning or not whether we're gonna have feather like problems in other words so that's another thing but uh, yeah so this is a uh, more of a launcher test than uh, an asteroid recovery uh, retrieval mission so without the big boosters, I think I'm going to call this uh, Maximus Minor. Okay. So that is this configuration. 
And I think I've said enough, so let's try this out. We've got a huge budget, so I guess the only thing is uh, I'm a little bit worried about destroying the launch pad. This is 0.25. That has not been fixed. I do have the stock bug fix module for that, but I don't know if it'll work. I recall it not working previously in another series, so we'll see. Okay, here we go. So yeah, quite a stout rocket on launch pad here, you can see, and of course the reason is because it'll ease retrieval. I, I don't think this is the sort of first stage that is going to tip over anywhere. Uh, of course, that means it can carry wide payloads, and uh, hefty payloads of various kinds, so that's good. Um, yeah, uh, so the plan is just to put us into orbit first. We're not matching the inclinations with the target yet. Uh, that will... That's sort of a problem and not very good, but uh, we do have enough delta V in the second stage. It'd be better to make all the adjustments with the second stage since it has like 2000 delta V uh, rather than do it with the launch stage, which uh, barely has enough to get to orbit uh, altogether. So yeah, I think that's the plan. So uh, we're launching way ahead of time. The asteroid is nowhere near us, so that's... That, that'll give us the time we need in order to make the adjustments necessary. I've turned off FMRS because we don't need it. Uh, again, we're going straight to orbit. Uh, if we did try to recover the SRBs, which I eventually intend to, uh, then FMRS would help with that. All right. All right, here we go. Okay, a slow ascent. 1.14 thrust to weight ratio, of course. Launch pad seems to be intact. Again, for this payload, it is not a, not an efficient vehicle, but uh, we are using this as an opportunity to test it out. Uh, of course, a lot can go wrong with this. Um, in fact, I, I didn't even I wasn't even sure that the joints would work and this overheating, deadly reentry, um, maybe stuff will tip over even though I don't think it will. You know, there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong still. Gonna make sure on orientation. I think with the SRBs, I'll have to set roll to ninety in order for them to be oriented properly. As you can see it's rolling by 90 degrees here and the SRBs would then be on this side and this side which would be wrong. So uh, I forgot to mention that the fairing diameter is 5.5 the main body diameter is 6 meters so just as a reference And that's mainly thanks to the fact that I could expand the procedural fairings adapters to those sizes now. I unlocked the technology for that. Uh, what I couldn't do was to increase the size of the thrust plate adapter, which allows us to connect multiple engines. That is still limited to 3 meters. And I suppose I'll have to unlock larger engines before I can expand that beyond 3 meters. So. Okay, seems like we have plenty of fuel. Let me make sure the reserve fuel is being reserved. All right. Very good. Surprisingly working out quite nicely. The first stage actually has one of the SAS modules increased in size to 5 meters. So it's got a 5 meter one. I hope that helps. Let's drop fairings. These are huge fairings, of course, so uh, probably not safe to release them uh, when the rocket is going because they might hit these fins. We've seen that before. Though at least right now they're uh, configured so that they'd naturally drop off between the gap between the fins, but still, probably not worth the risk there. And obviously, uh, one of the inefficiencies here is the low thrust weight ratio on liftoff. And that's why it took us a little bit more delta V than should be necessary to get into orbit around Kerbin when you have FAR installed. But anyway, but that was because we dumped the SRVs. With the SRVs, I'm sure we get quite a efficient trip to orbit. 
All right, so that fuel is now unlocked, and I'm going to separate the stages. All right, throttle is down. And let's have Smarty SS off. Let's have SAS on, and I'm going to activate these engines. I really think the parachutes should be well away for now. Okay, so it's going to wait until it gets to rendezvous with its uh, asteroid. And I'm going to extend the solar panels on the second stage now. Okay, but we're interested now in whether the first stage can return. But before I do that, I am going to zip up the save file because I'm worried about the game crashing on me. There's nothing like uh, doing a test, a very critical test and very expensive test to encourage the game to decide to crash. Uh, so as you can see, we've got a thousand Delta V right now. And again, this thing has to make a power landing. Uh, there's no way uh, the parachutes are adequate to bring it all the way down. So yeah, that's, that's fuel we will need. Okay, here we go for retro burn. Okay, that should do the trick. 144 tons. Okay, we are approaching the home continent. And we might be a little bit high. Well, let me reduce time warp and let's have Smarty SS go retrograde again. Okay, re-entry heating. This is a tricky thing. Temperature... Well, temperature on that's not too bad, but let's check the outside struts here. That's probably the place where things will be worst. We're over the mountains. Okay. Let's just... Retro burn a lot. But not more than that because we need that fuel for a touchdown. Darn. We are, by all accounts, overshooting. Though I can't see the KSC now because, well, that's the launch glamps, probably. There isn't any appreciable spinning at this point. Uh, though uh, the Smarty SS is controlling yaw quite a lot. And it just lost control. So, whoa! Totally random disassembly. Hmm. What did it say the reason for that was? Aerodynamic stresses. Ah, Ferrum Aerospace got me, huh? Liquid tanks. And then collisions after that. So the joint between the, the liquid tanks failed due to aerodynamic stresses. Well, didn't see that one coming. Hmm, that's probably the toughest thing to try and figure out how to fix on this. I mean, we're talking about just between the tanks, and they're inline tanks, there's no radial tanks, obviously. Okay, well, that's a lot of, a lot of funds lost there. I guess we can recover the parachutes at least. Oh, so our electric charge is fine and our controller is on here. Okay, full parachute deployment. Obviously slowing this down to a safe speed. And there's still hope for the second stage, mind you. That's still a thing. Okay, so let's recover this a little bit. Right, well... Yeah, not, not, well, actually, that's not bad. 26,000 funds recovered. Uh, mostly from the large SAS module and the radio chutes. So, 24 parachutes will get you quite a lot of funds. But, yeah, certainly not the, uh, it's less than 200,000 for that stage. I uh, forget how much exactly it is, but this, the, we, there was a lot more to recover, obviously. 
All right, anyway, uh, on to trying to nab that asteroid. And that's where the game crashed. Uh, but no matter, everything is fine, and here's our mission ready to go. So let's take a look at this asteroid. Uh, so there's its current encounter, and if we zoom in, we should see its path. That's, uh, well, let's see. Okay, at least it's not retrograde or anything. So that's that's good. 55 degrees, fair enough. So, shall we intercept it in interplanetary space or during its flyby? I think its flyby would be fine. It's probably got a pretty nice slow course since it's not coming very close to Kerbin itself. Let's see, what how much time do we have? 39 days, 37, 2 days. Yeah, that's about right. I mean, when you take a look at it, uh, here's the moon. It takes us 6 days to transfer to the moon. It's not got, And it takes us 2 3 days to transfer out to Minmus. It's not going to take us more than 2 days to get out to here. So, yeah, that's reasonable. So we can do that. All right. Uh, so yes, uh, let's check that life support is going to be fine for everybody through that. Uh, 35 days. Everything looks to be in three digits. There's no crew in the rover, so that's fine. Yep, I think we can go ahead. So let's time warp. Uh, let's not time warp here though, it's limited. Let me go back to the tracking station. Okay. Delete on close, close alarm, definitely don't jump to ship. Let us instead jump to the space tug. Alright, now let's plot for our intercept of this thing. Uh, we can probably try uh, off-plane transfer instead of trying to adjust inclination. That's a lot of inclination. We'll adjust inclination once we get close to it, which will be easier because it's further away from Kerbin. So we're going to burn out from here. We'll need some time to do our maneuvers with it, though. But uh, it'll be still in in current sphere of influence for some time. Well, obviously, if we do this right now, it's not going to be the right timing. It's going to be over here. We're going to be over here. That's not good at all. Yeah, it is going to slow. I'll boost out a little bit. So let's see. Make sure we're at the right place. It's not quite our periapsis. So here we go. So first use of toroidal aero spikes in a long, long time. Uh, I don't think we've used them in this series, but I mean in general in my KSP series, I haven't used them much. Okay, so now let's wait. Oh no. We, we might have moon interference at the time when we we're supposed to do it. I'm not sure though. Uh, okay, well at least it's giving me a sign here. But it's also got the moon interfering in an incorrect way. Keep that node. Okay, now we have to extend out further because the moon isn't boosting us. Ah, okay, so uh, now the, the target is going to be past us, so we're going to have to go fast. So right there we've got 166 kilometers. Probably from out here that's, that's not too bad. I can do 127. I'm going to take that for now. Obviously not great, but uh, considering the difference in inclination and everything, it's, it's also not bad. Alright, here we go. Rendezvous with an asteroid. Okay, 83 kilometers. Pretty good for now. Now let's uh, see if I can... Well, that shows me something completely different. That's worrying. 
But let's say I make an uh, how am I gonna make an adjustment when that shows me something completely different? That's not nice. Well, that shows me 53 now. Okay, maybe I can make an adjustment here. Okay, well it's got 9.9 .9 there. I'm gonna take that for 3.5 meters per second. Let's get out there. Okay, 1.8 kilometers, this says. That says 29.6 kilometers. Hmm. Let's just go with uh, burning toward, uh, just normal adjustment protocol instead of trying to uh, get closer like this because we're going to have to do a lot of correction anyway once we get out there. Yeah, relative velocity is still pretty high. 720. Okay. Remember, the second stage has reserve fuel. So, I mean, uh, as far as we, it can burn all this 1,300 and still be able to return. That's what it's meant to do. Okay, we are now on escape trajectory with the with the asteroid. And we have this huge inclination as well. Okay. Time to close this approach. 58 minutes. So in this case, MechJeb I think was better than the game itself in terms of telling us how close we'd approach to the target. Okay, I think 100 meters is good enough. Alright, I think the payload will have to do the rest of the work. So, decouple. Okay, payload engine on. RCS thrust forward. Okay. Smart ASS off, SAS on, back to this portion. Okay, it's all good. Now has a thousand eight delta V, but we will unlock that tank, and now we have two thousand meters per second of delta V, and we are going to initially use that to retrograde in orbit. Make sure that we are clear of everything. Yeah, very nice and clear. Okay, so let us get back into Kerbin orbit. Game does not think I'm in Kerbin orbit yet. And actually I want a uh, low periapsis. I also said something about correcting inclination and that is true. I should correct inclination out here rather than close to Kerbin. So let me do that as well. Uh, actually what we'll do is we'll temporarily keep our descending node high is what I think we'll do. So I'm going to sort of go like this and then I'm going to leave it be for a while until it gets to this descending node, correct inclination so that we can uh, land at the KSC or as close as possible and then bring it in. So we'll leave it here for now. Is the Mission in range? No. So we're going to have to switch. Let me switch through the tracking station just for safety's sake. Okay, here we are, and let us grab ourselves an asteroid. It's just a, it's a smaller size asteroid, so we're probably way overdoing things with this particular probe, but we'll see. We can put it into a nice tight orbit around Kerbin, perhaps. Okay. And I'm just going to use RCS to maneuver right now. Control from here. Arm. Target center of mass. I don't know. I, I don't remember precisely how to do this. Uh, but we'll see. Okay. Okay, let's 
slow down a lot. I remember the advanced scrapping unit being a little bit finicky about velocity and oh, this is this is okay right doesn't look like a great spot we're pretty large compared to the asteroid actually maybe it's very dense This asteroid fits Sean's cannery's requirements. Okay, good. That's what we wanted. So we have grabbed this thing. Now, um, let us point retrograde with respect to our orbit. Ooh, we can swing this around. We're, we're only 21 tons. We've got 5,000 meters per second. Okay, so uh, this, this, this little thing will be able to get much larger asteroids than what we've got here. Uh, in fact, this thing can put this asteroid into dual orbit without any trouble. In fact, yeah, yeah, quite quite a lot of things it can do. All right. Yep, overdid it. But let's let's not waste time. Well, uh, we could wait until periapsis, but I don't see any reason to. There's no reason to. We're approximately the same distance away from Kerbin anyway. Oh well, we could correct inclination. Um, yeah, yeah, let's create a little node and let's, let's have it a nice flat orbit. Well, let's do this for now. This looks good. Doing a lot more than we strictly need to with this thing, but hey, having a little asteroid, maybe we can do something interesting with it we'll deal with the particulars probably in the next episode so next episode we are going to bring back the second stage and then also get this into a tighter orbit around Kerbin so that it's not going to uh, be interfered with by the moon and perhaps we'll, we'll we'll do something with it we'll see I'll take suggestions on that No, no crashing it into anything, okay, folks. We are not crashing it into anything. That's that's the first, first policy. But we might mine it. We might just uh, rendezvous it with a station and attach it. I don't know. It's pretty light. It's not a big, big thing. Yeah, I don't know if uh, carbonite allows you to mine asteroids. I I thought so. I, I'll have to look into that. You know what, with uh, so much spare capacity, maybe I will refuel this this space tug. I, I'll just loft a fuel canister into space and then this thing can grab it and transfer the fuel into its nuclear stage. And the nuclear stage right now is... I don't know why the the this stage doesn't have much delta V. It should have had more than that. But I guess in a pinch, that's sort of a reserve stage if for some reason things don't work out. But yeah, I guess we could refuel it. All we really need to do is send a canister up, but we don't even need docking ports on it. So this thing can rendezvous with it and suck the fuel out. Oh, okay, I think I'll halt it there. No point correcting inclination when we're so far away from the nodes now. Not very efficient. Alright, so we have our asteroid. Let's see now. Put your vessel in orbit, okay. And let's see if I can do neutralize controls with SAS on or whether I need to take it off. Okay, I think I need to take off SAS. Okay, contract fulfilled. So that's good. Uh, oh, let's see our funds, okay. Well, we got some of our funds back, that's good. We've got plenty of science out of that as well. And probably we'll be able to get uh, more funds and science out of this if there's resources in this asteroid something rare and valuable perhaps then we'll be able to extract it but uh, we'll leave that for the next episode you know what we're gonna do there first uh, taking care of the second stage and then taking care of this making sure it's in a decent orbit around Kerbin and so we have begun asteroid uh, asteroid manipulation and development alright 
So, we'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.